What a ball from Blanco. Fernandez! Of course it's in! The new record holder, his fifth straight game with a goal to begin his career. 1-0. Brian Fernandez sets an MLS record as the Timbers win their second straight home match via clean sheet. But now another busy stretch awaits. Starting with their final East Coast road trip of the regular season, Sunday against New York City FC. Timbers defender Jorge Villafania is our guest on Timbers in 30, which starts right now. This is Timbers in 30, presented by AT&T. Welcome to Timbers and 30. I'm Jake Sivin. The Timbers completed four games in 12 days across all competitions with three clean sheet wins at home, two of those in MLS play. And now starts an equally compacted couple of weeks. It'll be five games in 15 days, including a coast to coast MLS and US Open Cup road trip. Here to chat with us about that and much more is Timbers defender Jorge Villafani. Thank you Jorge. guys. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming me. on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, first of all, obviously you came out of the match uh, on Sunday. How are you feeling? Yeah, unfortunately, uh... Feel better, feel better. I had a little um, hamstring, you can say hamstring, abductor yeah. Yeah. Uh, pull. So I'll be out for a couple of weeks, but uh, I mean, things happen. Uh, and just work my way to get to be healthy again. How important was that for you to come out of the match? Could you have made it even more if I, you tried to push through it? I really felt it. I really felt during that play when I landed, I felt like something pull. Yeah. And then I was I I, I try to get up and then to see if I could go, but I I knew if I if I go something worse could have happened. Well, including FC Dallas, you've been in a, a good run of form and uh, a look at the, the team as a whole. But you individually, what's been key for you to to personally have this, uh, this yeah, good run of games? Find, finding the consistency, finding the that I, I felt I felt good, starting to feel good physically. Mm -hmm. You know, my legs. Uh, and just, I think it's the team, you know, the whole team. I think if if everyone's playing good with the same intensity, everyone feels good, you know? And I think we've, we've been finding that, uh, that chemistry that we needed in the back line too. Uh, we've been three games at home without considering a goal, so that will stop your energy too, yeah. you know? And uh, and it helps, it really helps. And uh, like I was talking to you guys off air, um, we just feel, I think, that feel that, that we are at home, that we play at home, and that gives us that extra energy. You guys are getting yeah. clean sheets at home, scoring goals as well in Sunday's match. Uh, Timbers forward Brian Fernandez set a new MLS record. He scored for a fifth straight game to begin his MLS career. He scored now in seven straight matches, all competitions for the Timbers. He's scored in every game he's played for the Timbers. He's also the first player ever to do that. It's been thrilling to watch. It's been a lot of buzz league-wide. Jorge, how has Fernandez kind of changed the team? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, that's, we needed that, right? We needed, we needed a, a guy that, that will be on top and, and put the, the ball in the net. It, I think he's been doing this for a while. I, I follow him since he was in, in League IMX. Like, he couldn't stop scoring either over there. And now he comes here and, and he's still scoring. So I think he's a, a guy, uh, the guy he doesn't, you know, he doesn't miss those chances when he's in the box. So right now... He, he's scoring from everywhere. You, like you see the last game, you know, he, he scored from the outside. Like he gets a deflection and the ball goes in, you know, he's in the moment right now. And uh, having a guy like that, it's, it's amazing, you know, because there's a, the player that you count on and, and right now he's giving those, those goals. It's remarkable just how he has fit in, I think, when he scored goals. You're always going to fit in a, a lot quicker. But relationships right the way through the team are very, very strong. If we look at your relationships, You've had J Bo, Jeremy Obobashi in front of you. You've had Sebastian Blanco. How does it change from one player to the next with that connection with the man just in front? Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, you have to adapt to different styles of play. Uh, J Bo, it's a guy that he can hold the ball for you if you play it to him. Um, it's a guy that likes to drift more as a forward, so he will leave me more of that space to overlap. Mm -hmm. You know, Seba is a guy that has mobility, but he likes the bang 1v1 outside. So you have to kind of know the guys, know what they like to do. And, and I work out of them because I know that the guys, they're, they're dangerous. And if I leave in 1v1, I mean, I'll, I'll leave in the job to them. But uh, it's just like you said, the chemistry with, with the guys on front and the guys on the side. 
What about um, calling it the Battle of the Jorge's? Who goes forward, Jorge Moreira or Jorge Villafania? <laughs> what about that the understanding with with Moreira? Because obviously he likes to bomb on, yeah, but you I get think, forward as well. Uh, it's just uh, the understanding that if one goes forward, the other guy has to stay yeah. and keep balance. And uh, Gio has to make it you know, clear during practice and during the team meetings uh, that we have the, the, the liberty to go forward. But uh, pick the opportunities, and if it one goes, the other has to stay. Mm. And uh, I think we've been doing a pretty good job. Speaking of Gio, he's going to be around a little bit longer. Some news this week: Giovanni Severese and his coaching staff uh, signed multi-year <laughs> extensions to stay at the club for years to come. In a press release, Timbers owner and CEO Merritt Paulson and GM and president of soccer Gavin Wilkinson both praised the culture that Severese has created around the team. Uh, Gio earlier this week spoke about his reasoning for making a long-term commitment to the club. We're very happy here, the city of Portland, the fans, the people. We feel passionate, you know, uh, the fans here, they f make you feel that you are in a real soccer environment. And for me, this is very important because, you know, this is what makes me be hungrier and hungry every day. Jorge, how would you describe the culture of the club and the type of coach that Gio is? Yeah, like, uh, like Gio said, I think uh, Portland, it's a city that loves soccer it's uh like you see it every game packed stadium you know they're like big supporters they're always behind us and Gio I think he deserves it you know uh it's a guy it's a passionate guy you can see it <laughs> always on the <laughs> on the yeah. sideline you know yeah. every time we, good celebration every time we score he's just like <laughs> you know and uh, he trusts me that to the to the to the players and and uh, as a club with a, a lot of Latin players influence mm -hmm. and a coach that can speak both languages and can communicate good with the players it helps a lot let's we'll start to look towards sunday's match against new york city fc playing at yankee stadium a unique place first the advocate training report yankee stadium is a weird stadium you know of course it's a baseball stadium so of course it's, it's weird uh, but in the dimensions of the way the field is in, in the way they play there they used to they take that in, in you know in, uh, in for their advantage so we need to be smart we need to make sure that we go there prepared to what they're going to give us um, the challenges that they're going to pre present individually they have good players that can change the game but i think if we go there with the right mentality with the right plan uh we're a team you know now with the deeper roster that we have uh that we can go about you know these matches to to be all of them uh very competitive well it's a small field it's kind of a unique place to play because it's like an unfamiliar atmosphere and they're a tough team there they're very good they press very well they know how to play that so you know it's going to be a, a a game where we're really going to need to execute our game plan I think the field is a little bit weird, but we play and we won a couple of games there. I think uh, the key in that game is try to keep the ball and uh, be effective when we create opportunity to score. Our local Ford store's look ahead is focused on New York City FC, who have surged towards the top of the Eastern Conference and, as everybody's mentioning, always are difficult to play against at Yankee Stadium. Hey, look at the manager, Dominic Turan. He has settled in to MLS, the former assistant to Pep Guardiola. He came in last year and he struggled to be able to continue the form that Patrick Vieira had set off, but now he's in a good run of form with this team. He's got a good system in place. And if you go through individually, Haber, a striker, he's come in, he's been scoring goals, but he's had a hamstring problem. Wait to see if he does feature against the Timbers. If not, you expect to see Valentin Castellanos, who against Philadelphia Union scored two goals. He also drew two penalties. He's become a talent. I think more still expected of him. Big disappointment, though, Alexandru Matrita. DP signing, only four goals, one assist. Uh, he was acquired for a reported nine million. So the Romanian international hasn't really performed to the levels that was hoped for. At the back, similar to, to the Jorge's, fullbacks like to get on and try to utilize what minimal space there is. Jorge, when you talk about that space at Yankee Stadium, Diego Char called it weird. Yeah. Is it a weird place to play? What's it like for a player stepping it's, on the outfield? It's like, uh, yeah, it's a little bit weird because if you see the the sidelines, you're used to having fans a few yards, you know, right? And in that field, you have grass for like 10 yards. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's kind of weird. So you have to kind of, if you haven't played there, you kind of get a little bit lost <laughs> if you don't see the line. But uh, like you said, it's going to be a tough match. Um, we feel pretty confident going over there and uh, getting points on the road 
it's going to help us immensely. You were there, you, you got a win there, 2015, 1-0 victory. I was calling that game, I remember defensively how solid it was. Can you think back to that game, what was key to go into what is a difficult place to get three points? It is a difficult place, I remember, I remember that game, like you said. Like, uh, we, we have to do what we've been doing, a lot of communication on the back, uh, talking to each other, knowing that we're on the road, and we have to be more compact than ever. Uh, and when, when we create opportunities, put them away. Jorge, thanks yeah. for the time. Thanks for coming no in. Thank we you hope guys. your recovery goes well. Thanks. Thank we look, you. We look forward to seeing you on the field again Thank soon. Yeah. The Timbers and New York City FC play on Sunday evening in New York, part of a big day of soccer worldwide. You can watch this match, the Timbers and NYC FC, at 3.30 Pacific time on FS1. Also, listen on the radio, 1029-750, the game. The Timbers will fly straight from New York to Los Angeles for a Wednesday match in the U.S. Open Cup against LAFC. It's the quarterfinals, 7.30 on Wednesday night, you can watch it on ESPN+. Plus. And following the historic reopening of Providence Park this summer, you now have a chance to see the Timbers in person. So many games coming up this summer and limited availability remains for select matches. So grab the best seats before they're gone. Your tickets, which start at 23 bucks, can be reserved at Timbers.com. Coming up next, the breakaway. We look around MLS, a designation of the MLS All-Stars that are deserved and the delusional when we return. And later on, the Thorns shorthanded on the road, but no problem. Highlights of a come from behind win that put them atop the league. The Timbers and Danner Boots have teamed up for a new boot collaboration. The limited edition Timbers hiking boot is available online and in all of Danner's Portland area stores. Check out Danner.com slash Timbers for details. Now back to Timbers and 30, presented by AT&T. Let's look around to MLS on the breakaway, and we'll begin with what on paper is a really shocking result from last week. The Colorado Rapids handing LAFC just its second loss of the season, and the Rapids are doing all right under Connor now Casey. That, yeah, they've beat both LA teams now and unbeaten in seven games. There's a belief that it's just going right the way through the squads and any team that they're coming up against, they feel as though they're going to be going and getting results. And so you have to think that's the Connor Casey effect to some degree. I call them Connor Klopp because he did have time under Liverpool's manager, Jurgen Klopp. And the way Jurgen Klopp uh, admires his players and the belief and the positivity, well, you get the sense that's what Connor Casey has given to his men. Elsewhere, San Jose continues to rise up the Western Conference. They're good. They beat the LA Galaxy 3-0 in the Cali Classico last weekend. I put the Timbers top of the list for exciting brands of watching soccer. San Jose are second. They're fun to watch, their energy, and they wear teams down. And that's exactly what they did against LA Galaxy. It was 1-0 for quite a large period of the game, and then the wheels fell off for the Galaxy because San Jose continued to go at them. And the system for Matias Almeida, where it's man marking all over the pitch, it's fascinating to watch. So as soon as Timbers games are done, you're looking for San Jose results. It's impressive right now. So the MLS All-Star rosters are out. Ross, first, the players you're glad to see on the team. Mark Anthony Kay, the great Canadian. Of course, Diego Chara, though, should have started there. Diego Chara, we've talked at length how deserving it was, but now we'll see. Mark Anthony Kay, the great Canadian in the midfield, his second year in MLS. He has been quite the uh, imposing figure in there for LAFC. Good on the ball, good defensively, and he's got good dance moves, as we're seeing as well, as do all Canadians. I know you know that, Jake. Hey, happy Canada Day. Just <laughs> and Fourth of July. And Fourth of July. And Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic, uh, I think uh, Carlos Vela, and Wondolowski as well. If we go to the other side of it, the delusional picks, Pity Martinez. We're seeing his penalty poor miss for Atlanta against Toronto last week. Only two goals, three assists. This guy cost 15 million. And then Nick Ramondo. Uh, RSL, they, they blow hot, they blow cold. So does Ramondo. But it's more of the lifetime achievement award, I think, for Ramondo. His final year in MLS. Um, but I think there were other players more deserving of that. You look at Demarcus Beasley, his final year as well, and he's not named into the All-Star. Other players uh, I think shouldn't be there. Graham Zuzzi sporting Kansas City, our bottom of the table right now in the Western Conference. No way uh, I think any player from their team deserves maybe another year, but certainly not this one for the right back to be into the side. And then finally, let's go back to Atlanta with Barco. I had to look twice to think, are you sure it wasn't Blanco? It really is Barco going there, eight games played. 
Six games started. He's hardly been involved, so how could he be picked? He did score one wonder goal against New England Revolution. That's about it that he's done. July 31st against Atletico Madrid in Orlando, the MLS All-Star Game. Later on in the show, it's MLS Picks. Ross versus a Timber supporter choosing this week's matches. And next, we check in with the top of the table, Portland Thorns. They won't be getting their U.S. national teamers back quite yet. They're okay with that, and the Thorns are still winning. PGE's Peak Time Rebates program is giving away the ultimate VIP Timbers fan experience with four Key Bank Club tickets to the September 7th match versus Kansas City, a chance to meet a Timbers player, and more. Enter to win at portlandgeneral.com slash Timbers. Now back to Timbers and 30, presented by AT&T. After an exhilarating semifinal, four Portland Thorns are on to the World Cup final. The U.S. beat England 2-1 on Tuesday. Thorns midfielder Lindsey Horan had the game-winning assist on Alex Morgan's birthday goal. There was late VAR drama. England had a goal disallowed and was then given a penalty, which was saved by Alyssa Nair. A thrilling game. We can only hope the final brings as much entertainment. It will be the United States against the Netherlands on Sunday at 8 a.m. You can watch it right here on Fox 12 Oregon. The U.S. going for back-to-back -back World Cup titles. It could be the first World Cup title for three thorns on the roster. Lindsey Horan, Emily Sonnet, and Adriana French. It could be the second for Tobin Heath. Get up early on Sunday and watch. The Portland Thorns got a couple of their World Cup players back last week. Andrew Senia and Ellie Carpenter playing at Houston. The Thorns were down 1-0 in the 70th minute. Tyler Lucy from distance. What a goal. It's the NWSL goal of the week, and the match is level. Five minutes later, the Thorns keep pushing, and guess who? Midge Purse, opportunistic, her fifth goal of the season, which leads the team and is tied for second in the league. It's a game winner. Thorns win 2-1. to one. They're top of the NWSL, and they are back home tonight. A rivalry match against the Seattle Reign. 8 p.m. start at Providence Park. Still tickets available and plenty of time to get down to the stadium to watch the match. It should be a good one. It was number one versus number two in the Western Conference when T2 played at Phoenix Rising last week, and it was 1-0 Phoenix in the 37th, oh minute, uh, 37th minute, and Christian Ojeda, his second chance, results in a goal, and that ties the matchup 1-1. In the 49th minute after the deflected shot, Brian Hurtado scores for a third straight match to give T2 a 2-1 lead over the conference leaders. But Phoenix would come back. It was too, too late in stoppage time, and they actually scored twice late in stoppage time. Got a penalty after this goal. Phoenix wins 4-2. T2 is back home this weekend. They're hosting the Tulsa Roughnecks on Saturday, 7.30 p.m. at Providence Park. You can get tickets to that match on Timbers2.com. Giving back is such an important part of the Portland Timbers, Thorns, and T2. Recently, Timbers defenders Eric Valentin and Timber Joey made the day of some very happy elementary school students. Take a look. Hey, look, we're at Aster. Oh, I heard Rose City Readers is going to be here. Yeah, there's 195 K through third graders we get to read to. Should we go? Yeah. We're out here at uh, Astor Elementary School. Joey and I got the pleasure of reading to some kids today, and it was a, it was a blast. We read a book about Mia Hale. We read one about you know the uniqueness of names, and another just about uh, embracing creativity. So a lot of it's just getting out to the younger generation and kind of just empowering them with you know reading is a big one, staying physically active, and just taking care of the environment. Those are the three big things. If they see me every day, and I'm sure they're going to forget a lot of things I've taught them, but this is the one thing that will stick in their brain. I will have no problems getting them to read a little extra the next couple weeks. I completely and truly enjoy every second of it, whether I'm in schools, whether we're out planting trees. The community gives us so much as players. They are the most active soccer community in MLS. It's hard to rival that. So for us, it's, it's the least we can do to give back to the fans and just to, to give them a piece of us because they give us their hearts and souls. So it's the least we can do to give back and just show our appreciation because important is its own unique community and that's the reason it's Soccer City USA. Coming up after the break, MLS picks. Ross versus a Timbers supporter. And as we go to break, take a look at the Fleer Hot Plays from the month of June. Bobasi heads it down. Fernandez! Acrobatic! And putting it in. Big ball. Fernanda is there. Knocks it down. Maria! Ipobasi 
Cutting it back. Ebola save! Oh, what a ball from Blanco. Fernandez! Of course it's in! Now back to Timbers and 30, presented by AT&T. Let's end our show with MLS picks. Great matchup last week between Ross and Robert Solorio. Great for me. Both did well, Ross. Seven of 11, right? Yeah, Robert, he took me all the way to the end, and he even got a couple at the death with matches that would have added to my score, but he made it somewhat reasonable just with a seven to six, but I continue on. It's yeah. becoming too easy for me. Yeah, it's been a while since you've lost. Someone's got to beat Ross. Maybe it'll be Stuart Roberts this week. And I've got a skinny on Stuart because Dan Zeusman, who's in the ticketing department for, for the Timbers, he told me, I know Stuart's, and I said, give me some dirt on Stuart. He says he's the nicest guy <laughs> in the world, but it doesn't matter to me because I'm not going to be nice on Stuart. Ruthless. You Ruthless. look at the, the picks as well. He, he's yeah. picked well, so obviously Stuart, he follows the league. And one big difference, I think you got to look at Columbus, who have been struggling, but I'm backing them against Seattle, who are depleted, players injured, players away on international duty. If we go to the other page, we look at Sporting Kansas City. They're another team near the bottom. They've been struggling along the way, but I back them to, to come good against Chicago Fire, who have had a disappointing year. And San Jose, I keep seeing it. Make sure you watch them. They're fun to watch right now. It's a good brand of soccer. And then... Lastly, this is always a good one against Atlanta, New York Red Bulls, and I fancy Red Bulls to go in and get a draw against Atlanta, who I think, when you talk about brands, it's been very boring this year. Big game there. It'll be following the Women's World Cup final. Big national exposure for Speaking New of York national, Red Bulls good luck on your call for the Timbers v. New York City international call up. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I will be in New York uh, with the Portland Timbers and New York City FC. You can watch it on Fox Sports 1 this weekend uh, at 3.30. I'll have the call on FS1. Also, 1 or 9, 7 of the game. That's where Ross will be listening to him on the radio if you can't get to a TV. Enjoy the game. We'll see you next week right here on Timbers and 30. Thank you for watching Timbers and 30 presented by AT&T. For more on the club, visit Timbers.com.